Thank you for joining this lesson. We're going to discuss mathematics paper 2, linear programming. The question says that uh, a certain uniform supplier is required to supply two types of shirts, one for girls, labeled G, and the other for boys, labeled B. The total number of shirts must not be more than 400. He has to supply more of type G than of type B. However, the number of type G shirts must not be more than 300 and the number of type B shirts must not be less than 80. By taking X to be the number of type G and Y the number of type B shirts, part A, write down in terms of X and Y all the inequalities representing the information above. Remember to subscribe to this channel and to also share the link with friends. Let's get back to the question and read it closely so that you may come up with inequalities to represent the information. We are told that uh, the uniform supplier is supplying a uh, type B shirts for girls and type G, that is type B for, uh, for boys now. The total number of shirts must not be more than 400. Remember we are letting... Uh, the type G to be X and the type B to be Y. That means now when we take the type the type G that is X and the type B that is Y we are told that the total number must not be more than 400. So the farthest it can be is 400 which means it should be either equal to or less than 400. This is the first inequality. We continue with interpreting the information we are also told that uh, he must or he has to supply more of type G than of type B. Therefore, more of type G, that is X for girls, should be strictly more than Y. This is another inequality still from the information. However, the type G, this is now the X ones for girls, must not be more than 300. So X can either be 300 but not more than that. So it's supposed to be less than 300. That's also another inequality. And there is a, another inequality which tells us that uh, the number of type B must not be less than 80. Therefore, the one for boys should not be below 80, which means uh, it is from 80 and beyond. Should be from 80 and beyond. So these are the inequalities. And part B is telling us now, on the grid provided, draw the inequalities and shade the unwanted regions. So we are supposed to draw the inequalities. Remember that uh, inequalities are usually represented by what we call border lines. Therefore, every inequality has a corresponding border line to represent it. And I want to submit that uh, in the first inequality, we're going to use x plus y equals to 400. This is the first inequality. And because there is or equal to, then this is going to be a complete line. It's going to be a complete line. The next inequality, x equals to y, and this one is going to be a dotted line or an incomplete line. That's going to be a dotted line because the, it is strictly greater than, not or equal to. Uh, we have x equals to 300. Because there is the simple less than or equal to, then this one is going to be a complete line. There is the last one, which is a y equals to 80. Y equals to 80 because it's greater than or equal to then it's also going to be a complete line. So you have to specify the type of border lines for the respective inequalities. Those are the border lines, and now we can proceed to plot them. Let me start by doing the, the vertical and the horizontal axis. So the vertical axis, this is where x, uh, y is going to be. This is the y-axis or the vertical axis. 
then I'm also going to draw the x-axis here this is uh, the x-axis now with the x-axis let me use intervals of 50 from for each large square so I need uh, to move from 50 100 150 200 then uh, 250 then uh, 300 350 400 yeah those are enough intervals we can also label the vertical axis using the same the same range whereby i need uh, 50 100 150 this is a uh, 200 250 300 350 400 and such so these are now the these are what we are calling the axis well labeled yeah then now we can proceed now to plot our inequalities or to plot the border lines representing inequalities the first inequality as a borderline x plus y equals to 400 that one being a line with a gradient we need a small table of values if x plus y should be 400 then we can get a few values of x and y that will guide learners to get some coordinates lying on that borderline so if x is 100 and x plus y equals to 400 then we should be having 300 as the value of y if x is 200 then the value of y should also be 200 so that x plus y is 400 if uh, x is 300 then y is going to be 100 so those are some of the coordinates for the first borderline let us now plot it we need a uh, x equals to 100 y to be 300 so the coordinate is x 100 y equals to 300 this is the coordinate that is where i'm plotting it the second one is a uh, y being 200 and x also 200 so this is where this is where i will have the coordinate and the third one 300 100 this is the point 300 100 that is the coordinate so we can now do the line using a straight line the straight line is supposed to be complete that one is uh, noted already the line is supposed to be complete therefore this is the first border line already identified the second border line should be y equals to x if y equals to x then it means uh, when x is 50 y should also be 50 so this is the coordinate 100 the other one should also be 100 150 150 200 200 is already there so we do the line and it should be noted that uh, this second borderline is a dotted borderline so the nature of the inequality is the one which outlines uh, or which dictates the kind of a borderline that we are going to have so this is the second borderline should be dotted number three is a uh, x equals to 300 a complete line so x equals to 300 along the x-axis at 300 that's where we are going to raise a vertical line x equals to 300 so we do a, a complete line at this point that is a uh, the third inequality and finally y equals to 80 so on the y-axis at 80 we do a horizontal borderline again a complete line
a complete line. So now we have uh, the region now, which has been bounded by all the inequalities. We can call it region R. This is the common region bounded by all the inequalities. The first inequality is here. So we shade the outer sides of all the inequalities. Also for this one, we shade the outer side. This one, we also shade the outer side. And the last one, we also shade the outer side. Because we have been taught by shading the unwanted regions, we are supposed to, to draw them to show the area. So that is the common area bounded by all of them. Inside that area, there are possible combinations of uh, type, type G and type B, which can be supplied by the uniform supplier to the school. Now we continue interpreting the question and we have part C, which says that uh, given that type G, this is the one on the x-axis, cost 500 per shirt, and type B cost, this one is the one on the y-axis, it cost 300 per shirt. Use the graph in B above to determine the number of shirts of each type that should be made to maximize profit. This is called optimization. And the first thing we are supposed to do here is to obtain what we call the objective function for this uh, information. So the objective function, P, is going to be 500 by X. We pick the profit from the quantity on the X axis plus 300, that is uh, the cost of the quantity on the Y axis plus Y. So this is our objective function. And now for us to get maximum profit or the number of shirts for each type to give maximum profit, we should obtain what we call the search line. So the search line is given such that uh, it has a X intercept. X intercept of the coefficient of Y, which is 300, and a Y intercept of the coefficient of x which is 500 so we swap the or we interchange the coefficients to get the intercepts that one should be noted for us to get the coefficients uh, for us to get the intercepts of the search line for us to get the coefficients for us to get uh, the intercepts of the search line we interchange the coefficients of x and y from the objective function. So this is the objective function. If this is 300, the coefficient of y, it becomes the x-intercept. If the coefficient of x is 500, it becomes the y-intercept. So now, it can also be known that for the intercepts to be plotted, if they are large values, they can be divided by a common factor so that they fit well on the provided axis. Therefore, we can actually divide each intercept by 10, which is not a must, so that we plot a X intercept of 30 and a Y intercept of 50. Then we use it as our search line. Let me apply the, the reduced such line now so 30 as the x intercept and 50 as the y intercept so the y intercept is going to be at 50 then uh, the x1 is going to be at 30 so those are the intercepts that we are going to plot so let me now draw the such line let me draw the search line. So that I may show you now the use of the search line in obtaining what we call the maximum profit. This one 
will be called our search line. This one will be called our search line. Now with our search line, we can proceed comfortably to obtain the combination which gives maximum profit. Now I'm going to use my set square and the straight ruler so that if I slide the set square such that uh, it goes to the region parallel to the search line. So I'm going to support my set square such that uh, the longer side is parallel to the search line. Then I slide it into the region which has possible combinations. Now when I slide this search line into the region, the farthest coordinate will give me maximum profit. So let me identify let me identify the the farthest by sliding the set square slowly into the required region until I find the farthest coordinate. Until I find the farthest coordinate. So the farthest coordinate which is in the region can now be identified and it's going to be the coordinate here. So the coordinate at this point is coordinate 300, 100. So we need 300 for the X type and 100 for the Y type. Then now the maximum profit itself is going to be 300 times 500 for the X type then 100 times 300 each of the wire type. This is going to be, this is a 150,000, this is 30,000, so we get 180,000 Kenya shillings as the maximum profit. We can also use a inspection method whereby we just check a few coordinates within the region that can give us a maximum profit uh, that is where we shall consider, for example, in the required region, if it is X giving us maximum profit, then we can consider the coordinate which has the largest value of X, and that is definitely 300. So 300 is the maximum X coordinate which is in the region. Now we look at possible combinations to 300 of Y that will maximize profit. So 300 can be combined by, at this point we have 380, then the other one is 300 combined with 90, 300 combined with 100. So when you compare those coordinates, which are the, which are the ones uh, alleged to be having the maximum profit, then you find it is only 300 when combined with 100 that will give us the maximum profit. Thank you so much for following, subscribe and share.